There are several areas from which you derive revenues for tourism. Yes. The benefit of our viewers, let's, let, let me just explain the structure of our tourism industry. Our, the revenue aspect and mm -hmm. how we calculate it is a problem right now in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and I, I'll explain why. I spoke about the 300 million in visitor expenditure. Now okay. that 300 million, what is taken into consideration to come to that, to that amount? Hotels and restaurants. And the restaurants are only the restaurants that are in the hotels. So you're not taking into consideration tours, taxi drivers, restaurants outside of hotels. So you're saying there's more money. It's right? more. You calculate it, but I, there's I would, some that escapes would, the net. Uh, there's a lot that escapes the net. I mm -hmm. would tell you this. Once we get the satellite account in place, which is something that gives you a better overall view of visitor expenditure, I am 95% sure that visitor expenditure will go up by over 100%. Mm -hmm. So there's visitor expenditure. Now, in terms of, when I, when I was alluding to the structure, in terms of the different elements, you have a yacht in tourism which is our biggest niche okay. market. You've got these expensive resorts, okay, Mustique, high-end mm -hmm. high resorts, Mustique, Petty St. Vincent, Young Island, etc. Then you've got the Caribbean tourists who come here for Carnival, um, Easter. Mm -hmm. Do you have these in, in, in your ministry? Do you have them segmented in that way and do you know what percentage of each segment makes up the whole pie? I can tell you that we get our greatest number of visitors from the region, Caribbean okay. visitors. But that's when you put Trinidad, Barbados, Grenada, St. Lucia, all of them into one pot. Mm. You understand? After that comes the U.S., then the United Kingdom, and then Canada. So if, you, if you're excluding, if you're going by individual countries, the U.S. Is, is the largest. But the Canadian market continues to grow by leaps and bounds. Our figures show, and, and, and the uh, um, outbound figures for Canada show that they continue to travel no matter what. And we expected that because out of the G8 countries, Canada is the one who has survived this economic crisis the best. And mm -hmm. they're looking for that new destination. Most Canadians have visited Cuba already. They're looking for that new destination. But on top of that, they also want to get there quite easily. So they don't want to take two, two flights to get to their destination, especially right. if you're coming from Western Canada, which is, which is very wealthy in oil. So we, we look at Canada, we know, we know the, the, we know what so they can offer So Canada is an emerging, is, is a seriously emerging market for Very you. big. I can, I can tell you this, for example, Jamaica's Canadian figures hmm. went up by over 300%, are up by over 300% this year. Well, I suspect that as we go on, this is going to be dynamic. There's nothing yeah. static about this. Very. Now, let's just talk about some other things under your watch as Minister of Tourism. Projects. Yes. You have some in the pipeline, you've got some that have been recently completed. Um, tell me what these are. Well, as many people know, we did the 15 sites throughout St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Mm -hmm. um, some new, some are um, revamped, some we've added on to the Botanical Gardens, for example, is one that we've, that we've worked very hard at. Um, we've done some work on the Curator's House, we've fenced it, we're putting back the entrance to the original entrance because it's a more grandeur engine. You can now get married in the gardens for the first, for the first time. Oh, your salt pond, we spent over 1.4 million on that. Raraku, 1.3 million. Mm -hmm. uh, a new, a new um, nature trail in Cumberland. So we've done a lot to improve the, 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 the product that mm -hmm. is St. Vincent and, and, and the Grenadines. Right now, we're, we're doing the boardwalk down at Villa, okay. which is something that has been greatly needed. The only problem with that is that you know, the current seems to change so often, and, and the weather patterns and, and the climate seems to change so you have so some often. technical issues there? We have some technical issues because it seems as if the, the tide continues to rise. Okay. And so the height we've put it at might become problematic until, unless we can, find, we can find a solution. But I think the, the project that I would be most proud of will be one, um, the coming on stream of the Tourism Authority, which is something that was greatly needed and long overdue. And, and two, the Hospitality and Marine Institute. If we're serious about tourism, then this has to be put in place. This is the one that you put in in your constituency. Well, it's going to be in it's the constituency that the you represent. Yes, now. it is. Yeah. Now, when I say project, Bokama comes to mind. Bokama on the Bay. You mentioned it, I think, earlier in the program um, when we were talking about the economy. A lot of t a lot of the times, Bokama is in the news and not in a nice way. It's, it's in the news as 
you know, under threat, seeming to heading 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 to a failure. But I haven't it's, seen that in terms of white well, news. No, no, no. When I listen, okay, maybe not the news, but you hear people talking about it. In fact, people describe it as a scam. Yes, I've heard that. Can you assure me that you're confident that Bukama is a bona fide project that's I ju I just came back not from one of Barbados. these in high international scams? I just came back from Barbados this week in which um, Bukama did the launching of the Merricks project in Barbados, mm -hmm. of which they're going to start construction soon. I think right now they have, not I think, I know right now from, from about a few weeks ago, their investors have been coming in and staying at, and staying at Bukama to see how the project has been going. I've been told that 95% of the investors are very happy with what they've seen. This project has been going on for how long? I think construction in this project has been going on, I would say, for about three to four years. Three to four years. I could and be is wrong. it on track? Is it, is it meeting so its far, deadlines? So far, so good. I think they might be behind a bit. Mm -hmm. um, not significantly, but so far, so good. We still hope to have, they still hope to have the 360 rooms completed by January to have the official, official opening of the first phase. Okay. And we're still hoping by, by April 2012, in conjunction with the Argyle International Airport, they'll have the second phase completed. So Bukama is, is solid. Bukama is solid. Solidly and as a matter project. of fact, Bukama has been one of our selling points to get the major airlines to come into St. Vincent and the Grenadines because obviously they want to make sure that they can fill their planes. We're talking about planes, and I know you described the Argyle International Airport development project as the single largest project, project that has ever been undertaken by a government mm. in Timmins and the Grenadines. Yeah. That's a fact. Is this a do or die in project for tourism? We I don't have it and tourism goes nowhere. Is that, is that what it is? Honestly speaking, I do think so. Mm. Um, other people might disagree with me, but I don't think it's only a do or die project for, for tourism. I think it's a do or die project for Siemens and the Grenadines in terms of its development and progress. Listen, this project is not only about tourism. This project is about the development of the country. This pro project is about the development of agriculture, being able to export our produce. Mm -hmm. So we need this more than, more than ever. As, as I made clear earlier, I mean, you're talking about a country where the largest plane we can, we can get is a Dash 850C to bring in visitors. Okay. If we expect tourism to grow, it's, it's not going to grow by having E.T. Joshua in there and at that being our major airport. Some people say that you have an airport and you have no hotels. They describe it almost like a chicken and egg situation. Well, I was just it's not a that. chicken and egg situation, is it? I think it is. I mean, y you would tell people, okay, well, put the airport there and then you'll get the investment. But the mm -hmm. investors might say, put the, put, um, other people might say, put, put the investment it. there mm -hmm. and then we'll build but the airport. But how do you see it? Because I don't see it necessarily as a chicken and egg situation. I don't think where you sit, you should see it as a chicken and egg situation. You should have a clear plan as to what must come first. But I think that the plan has already been put in, mm. has been put, it, put into production. I mean, you're talking about, and Bukama made it clear, Harlequin, Harlequin Investments made it clear. Mm. If we did not plan to put an international airport, Bukama wasn't coming on stream. They made that quite clear. And you're talking about a, a project where they, their salary is 1.2 million. Their salaries are come up to 1.2 million US mm. a month. That's their monthly payroll. That's their monthly payroll. Mm. Without the international airport, that wouldn't be taking place. And so we have to learn to be more responsible. And I, when I say that, I'm talking about the opposition, basically, mm. when you speak about these projects and so on, because it is beneficial to St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The Agar International Airport comes with a huge price tag. Yeah. And I think you said, 250 million US dollars. 240 to 250 million. 240 million. to 250. Even at that current estimate, today where we sit, there's no clear indication that we've procured the funds to complete this project. Do Vincentians have a right to be nervous about that? I think Vincentians have a, have a right to be proud of what they're seeing going on because mm -hmm. without, let me put it this way. If you look at the way this airport has been, has been done and, and how it's come about, I mean, you have to give the Prime Minister credit for coming up with an ingenious plan. Because without this plan, without the coalition of the willing, Siemens and the Grandians could not afford an international airport. Mm. Under no circumstances. You're talking about a project, as you said, 240 million US. US. For a country that has a national budget of just over 200 mi million US 
a year. Mm -hmm. so, so that that shows you what we're going up against. Well, it's, a, it's a huge scale compared exactly. to using that comparison. Yeah, none of the big three are donating anything to it. The US, Canada, the United Kingdom. Mm -hmm. We have done a tremendous job. The Prime Minister has done a tremendous job of going out and getting these funds and getting the expertise to build this airport. Okay, we're going to go to a break, but when we come back from the break, we're going to delve in a bit more on the International Airport Project. You're looking at Unrendered. My guest is the Honorable Glenn Beach, Minister of Tourism. More when we come back. <laughs>